In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how can you get your BMS fee proposals quickly approved and get a purchase order two weeks later. In this week's discussion, it's more relevant to BMS service departments. So if you're a BMS account manager and you're putting in fee proposals to your client to do various BMS remedial works or upgrade works, and an example would be um, the BMS server, it's 10 years old, you need $30,000 to upgrade the hardware or the software, rebuild the database, graphics, alarms, and trends. How can you get that fee proposal approved really easily? I'm sure you have all been there before where you're putting in fee proposals for, I think what you'd class as quite critical work and you just never hear about it again. The proposal just disappears and uh, the years go by and this BMS is becoming more of a risk component. So today in this video, we're gonna talk about BMS roadmaps and or also known as capital expenditure plans. And this is how we are gonna ensure that for the next three to five years, all of our fee proposals get approved. Let's imagine that you own an apartment, which you probably could do. Um, let's say the body corporate comes to you and says, hey, listen here, um, this building's 40 years old and all these external windows, they're starting to rot and we need to replace them. So we've got some pricing and next month we're gonna start this work. We need $20,000 from each of the property owners. Do you think that every single property owner is gonna have 20 grand just hanging around um, for some of this remedial works? Probably not. And the same thing applies in commercial buildings, commercial offices, for example. Um, they have a budget of how much money they're gonna spend every year over 10 years. So a 40-story office building in a city, like it could have a $100 million 10-year plan. Um, not just chillers and boilers and fire panels, it could be some structural stuff and, and all sorts of things. So in this, um, 10 year plan, um, which are, is often called a capital expenditure plan. They might have that, you know, in, in year three, there's $2 million to replace the chillers. And in five years, they're going to replace the boilers. And in 10 years, they're going to do a massive lift upgrade. Uh, maybe they're going to redo the foyer, whatever it is. So they have these really big plans. Now, guess who it is that decides what mechanicals 10-year plan is. So in this list, mechanical, electrical, fire, hydraulics, security. It's the mechanical consultant. So the mechanical consultant comes to site, they've been engaged over a two-month period to develop this 10-year mechanical refurbishment plan. So the mech engineer is in the chiller plant room, he's looking on the chiller at the nameplate to see when the chiller is manufactured, manufactured looks at the pumps and the motors and what's going to cost to replace these things, how long they're going to last for. It's not on his radar or on her radar to be thinking about the BMS five or 10 year replacement plan. So what tends to happen is these 10 year plans, they don't have an entry in there called building management system that we need to upgrade the server and this year and then all the main pull on controllers here and all the VAV controllers here, it's, that doesn't exist really. So what you need to do is you need to go and talk to the facility manager and work with them and the owner to develop a 10 year BMS life cycle replacement plan. Um, I actually tend to normally only do five year roadmaps for building management systems. Uh, it's not like chillers and boilers and things. Um, and so gen unless the BMS was brand new, I'd do a 10 year plan, which I've never done one of those before, but for most BMS systems that are around five years old or 10 years old, I would look at a five year plan. So you can imagine, you know, a building owner would be a lot more receptive to you coming at them and saying, listen here, the BMS server, it's two years old, it's just fine. However, Microsoft is not gonna be supporting the Windows operating system in say five years time. So in around five years time, we're definitely gonna have to upgrade um, the BMS application to be supported with the Microsoft current operating system and about that time the server hardware is also going to be obsolete and need to be replaced. They'll be much more receptive to saying right in three years time there's a plan there we need $30,000 upgrade the server compared with you put a proposal out there to say hey listen 
Um, by the way, your operating system is not supported. The BMS server, the hardware is out of life. This is a critical component. If it goes down, we'll lose visibility of the entire BMS. They don't like that because that $30,000 isn't in the plan. They've got to go find it from somewhere else. And that's why sometimes it just doesn't happen. So um, in this spreadsheet, there's an entry called building management systems and over a five year plan, you are gonna work out what to do and how much money should be budgeted. What's really important here is that when you send a fee proposal in, it just gets lost. If it's not gonna be actioned, it'll please be lost. Whereas in this 10 year plan, that's gonna be around for 10 years. If you've got the numbers in the, the years, that doesn't get lost. So in like next year or the following year, the owner looks at the plan and says, right, I need, you know, $8.5 million for next year. Lifts, you know, um, a little bit of, you know, a chiller upgrade and we need, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100, $200,000 for the building management system. That money will be released. There'll be a bucket of money there. So when that time comes, put the proposal in, confirm the costs, it gets released. And that's how you get fee proposals paid. So what you want to be doing is you need to put together like a 20 page report um, of you know the end of life programs or the age or whatever of all the stuff that's in the building management system, but also extra stuff you want. You know, if you want an energy management system or a building analytics or you know, want to do a recommission or um, you know control strategy optimization, those sort of things, get everything in there. Um, you know, the network switches. When are we going to upgrade the network switches? Five years time. We're going to replace all the network switches. Fifty thousand dollars. You might have, you know, a rolling program of over five years. You know, cost allowed there. You know, say two, three hundred thousand dollars every year for five years just to replace all the obsolete field controllers. First year or two, you're going to be doing all the main plant controllers, chillers, boilers, cooling towers, AHUs. And then you roll into three years of um, floor upgrades where you're replacing all the VAV controllers. You know, uh, the, the chill water system, is it a constant volume primary pumping system? Do we want to change that to be a variable volume primary pumping system? What do we need? We need variable speed drives. We might need some magnetic flow meters. What does that cost? Put a price to it, get it in the program, get it in the year. You know, year two, year three, whatever it is. You know, does the... Um, does the client have a building energy efficiency plan? So a neighbor's roadmap, because sometimes the environmental sustainability engineers will look at the energy model and stuff and, and work out, look to go from a four star energy efficiency rating to a five star energy efficiency rating. You need to do these things. You need to get a, you know, a better lift destination control system, or you need you know, new chillers or variable speed drives, you know, lobby lighting, all sorts of things. Can you get into that list? Because if you can um, get into the energy efficiency plan, that will also help justify the costs that have been building up in the capital expenditure plan to support this as well. So there's a few things really to think about there. And you need to put a lot of effort into this. This is not just going to be a two week thing. You know, spend three months working on this plan because if you do the hard work, it'll just pay off in the future. Can you imagine if you've got say 20, 30 buildings in the city, and you've spent you know, 12 months talking to the FM and building up and getting your numbers into the capital expenditure plans for all these buildings, done the hard work. What happens now is every year, the budgets get released, the money comes out, and you, know, you do the work that was planned for that, for that year. You might even find that your problem then becomes how do I deliver on all this? I need resources, I need to get more people, I need to do a bit like go on a re recruitment drive. So do all this hard work and for the next five years, you'll just have project work confirmed. Um, it'll be really easy. They won't be trying to think up projects like when it's too late and there's major failures because the money's in the budget. Now, the first thing you need to do is um, you need to ask the facility manager um, when in the year is your cutoff date for you to finalize the forecast for next year's budget? Because um, they're going to look at all sorts of things like, um, you know, the capital expenditure plan, what's the number for next year, plus maintenance costs and, you know, breakdown costs, whatever else is. So when you ask them, you know, when is that date, 
Can we talk to you about it um, so that you get some things in the forecast for next year? That question, it leads into the second question, which is actually, you know what? Why don't we look at putting together a five-year forecast or roadmap for the BMS? I think that a lot of facility managers will be quite receptive to that because they want to have the right numbers in their budgets so that it's easy for them. They don't want to deal with reactive you know, breakdowns and failures at the last minute. Now, before we wrap this up, the last thing is this is not a job just for the BMS account manager who is probably very busy trying to maintain 30 sites. So if you're a BMS service technician, try and be a bit more proactive about this. When you're on site, start writing down the part numbers of the different types of controllers you have. Try and find out what is the end of life plan. You might find that your, your main controllers in the plant rooms are still completely supported. However, the VAVs, which sometimes to me seem to be a bit older legacy type devices, maybe they're obsolete already. Um, start thinking about you know, energy management systems and building analytics. Just think ahead of all these things and start maybe like jotting them down and adding like, you know, if, if I was upgrading all these controllers, how long would it take me? So the cooling tower plant room, it takes about two weeks, you know, to you know rewrite the BMS function description, do some control strategy stuff. Um, you know, pull the controllers out, put the controllers in, put the wires back in, rebuild the database, how long's gonna take. Start being proactive and helping put this, the meat around this. So then you can go to the account manager and say, hey, listen, by the way, this building here, I've been looking at this 10 year or five year plan. It's gonna cost, we need like, you know, $2 million over the next five years, blah, blah, blah. That's really awesome proactive stuff. You know, that's how you're gonna get promoted and, and you know, be seen as like a, you know, one of the leading service technicians. So, there's a lot of things for us to think about here. Right guys, I guess that's that. Um, I hope you got some value out of that. I'm sure everyone will agree that, you know, putting together a bit of a plan over five years, that's how you're gonna get things to happen rather than sort of last minute type stuff. If you got some value, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next week.